It's not uncommon for people to seek God during times of hardship. And in some ways, the pandemic has been no different. But even before COVID, a growing number of Americans were moving away from organized religions. And the pandemic didn't do anything to stop that trend. A survey this month from the Pew Research Center found 29% said they had no religious affiliation. That's up six points from 2016, with the millennial generation leading that shift. So with the pandemic dragging on into its third year, CNBC's Seema Modi tells us faith leaders are trying new ways to reach out and touch someone. For many, this is what religion looks and sounds like. Familiar customs, prayers, and holy sites. But the future of worship may look and feel very different. To reach millennials, 44% of whom say they have no religious affiliation, leaders are bringing the experience to them. I use Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, uh, stories, all sorts of things to go to where people are, and that's where a lot of the young people are. Hoping to answer the toughest questions about life and death itself. As we emerge from this pandemic, the younger generation's uh, faith is changing a bit. Uh, I think it's raised some uh, timeless questions for a group uh, that might not have had to uh, confront them, uh, you know, so early. At the East End Temple, Rabbi Josh Stanton says he's doing less lecturing and more listening. My sermons are getting shorter and shorter and more and more open. And what I try to encourage people to do is discuss them with me, argue about them. You want people to argue with you. There's an old joke that for every two Jews, there are three opinions. Our culture for thousands of years has been one of debate and discourse. Debating controversial topics like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The facets of the arguments and conflicts, et cetera, are super important. And I think that that's certainly a, a pillar of Judaism is that intellectual pursuit. More progressive religions are gaining popularity. Middle Collegiate Church grew by 500 members during the pandemic, even though its actual building was destroyed by a fire last year. We've put social justice and democracy in the middle of faith in a way that really speaks to young folks. Some critics would say you're changing their relationship with God. That what you're doing is, is different than the traditional approach. What's your response? I'm so glad I'm changing their relationship to God. If that's what we're doing, that's exciting to me. I'm trying to get God out of the box. Member Perrin Allen grew up in a conservative Christian household, but as a gay man, struggled to feel accepted. You had to do things the way the Bible says literally, but I feel like the Bible and Jesus Christ believe in love no matter what. And I feel like I found that at middle. Shalom, like to give out and the glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashum, Yahusha, Bashum, and Kakodash. Like give double honors to our apostles and elders, Great Millstone. Salutations to our sister Akim, pushing his word out across the four corners of the world. And that's what you just saw. Hey, that's beautiful news through the Spirit. How a growing number of Americans are departing from these different religious practices. And I was looking up that term, organized religion. And it goes into a structured system of faith or worship, especially one followed by a large number of people, such as Christianity, Islam, or Judaism. And in actuality, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he doesn't deal with large numbers or a massive amount of people. Because if you actually read into the scriptures, get a better understanding, the Most High, Yahweh, always dealt with small numbers just to manifest and magnify his name more. So these different organized religions, such as Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, their purpose is universal, it's trying to attract more people. And the more people you have, the more minds you have lost into these different way of doctrines, and more so, more money to these different religious leaders. So now you have these different religious leaders from Christianity, Islam, and Judaism are coming up with different tactics and methods and trying to attract the younger generation because honestly you do have a lot of people are finding out that these different organized religions are nothing but bs and they're not telling you the truth of the holy scriptures especially the so-called black church where they do nothing but sing the preacher yapping his mouth all throughout the sermon sweating all hard not bringing out no type of scriptures if he do it might be one or two throughout the whole sermon so it's no type of spiritual understanding 
coming from these different organized religions. And that's your Howard Bashim al Bashar showcasing to the world and more so to his true believers, the hopeful elect, that what we are a part of is the true way. And that takes me to Colossians 2 and 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So that man that spoiled us, that was authorized by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shai, was Esau Edom. As it says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. So he spoiled us, meaning that he ruined us. He damaged our minds through these different philosophies, these false doctrines, these false religions. And they had our people, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans, who are the biblical Israelites, to fall into these wayward ideologies and accept these different false idols, which made the Heavenly Father Yahweh more furious and provoked them to more anger and wrath upon us. Because all of these different organized religions leads into idolatry, worshiping of false idols, and keeping you as an Israelite more astray from your power source, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. And as it says in Hosea 4 and 6, our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, meaning the true knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and the discernment of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, via pushing out his word in his true form. So a lot of our people are lost to that spiritual concept. And it says, through philosophy and vain deceit, and that was spearheaded by the tabernacle of Edom, which 2 Thessalonians the second chapter refers him to as the man of sin, the son of perdition. And it also goes into about Esau Edom being with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, meaning that he has deceived the whole world. So beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. So we learn these different organized religions, especially Christianity, after what our forefathers were worshiping into, especially when it started in slavery. It was just passed now from generation to generation. And what became attached to these different organized religions were false gods and these satanic holidays. Because our people had the mindset, well, Big Mama did it, Granddaddy did it. So those vain customs, which were vain deceits, were after the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world and not after Yahweh Shah. And that's something that none of these organized religions push out. The vibration of Yahweh Shah. His true characteristics. What he truly stood for. His image. And what he's going to do to this current world when he returns. And that takes me to 1 Corinthians 3 and 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. And that includes all these different doctrines from these different organized religions, especially this plantation Christianity. And from these organized religions, you have a lot of these religious leaders. They'll attend to these different theological schools and truly not learning anything. Just look at Vocal Malone, because they spent all those years, all their time and all their resources just to be fed more lies, to mislead more people and have those particular people more lost in the sauce. So for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Yahweh by Shem Yahweh For it's written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. So none of these churches have the true way of Yahweh by Shem As it says in Acts 748, how be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. And it's been more manifested within these last days. All these different organized religions are not the true way, especially for the biblical Israelites. Let's get right quick. Psalm 85 and 11. Truth should spring out of the earth. And pursuant to Revelation 11 chapter and 11 verse, the truth is how the spirit of life enter into those individuals, referring to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, which links up with Ezekiel the 37th chapter, how those dry bones came back into life because of the breath, referring to that spiritual inspiration of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh via the gift of the Holy Spirit, and through that spiritual process, now we can identify ourselves as being the biblical Israelites within these last days and knowing who our true enemies are, knowing our power source, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and knowing his parables, his secrets, aka prophecies. 
And that type of spiritual gift is not within these organized religions. It would never be so. And that's why it's coming out more to the light, more to the forefront, how all these different organized religions are losing great numbers of people. And now they're scratching their heads, coming up with different ideas to attract more people to come into their different religions. So it says, truth should spring out of the earth and righteousness should look down from heaven. Which takes me to Matthew 24 and 14. And this is Yahweh Shah speaking. And this gospel, meaning this reward of good tidings, this good news. And that implies salvation in the kingdom of heaven is only for the children of Israel, Yahshua Allah, beginning with the elect of them. In the book of Micah, the seventh chapter, it stated how the truth should be performed unto Jacob. And that's referring to the 12 tribes of Israel, and more so the elect of those particular tribes. So this gospel, this good news, these good tidings can only be applied to the elect of the nation of Israel, not these other nations, how we've been taught in all these different organized religions that's still pushing out these wayward doctrines. So think about these different organized religions, how long Christianity, Islam, Judaism been out and they have gravitated billions of people. So if that's the case, if that was the true way then why haven't Yahweh Shah came back? So obviously, that's not the true way. That's not the true gospel or the good tidings. And it says, In this gospel, other kingdoms should be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then should the end come. And by that, pursuant to Baruch, the fourth chapter in the 37th verse, how it says, Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. And now we, as being the hopeful elect, are being gathered together from the east to the west by the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh And due to that, we are seeing more and more of the biblical prophecies coming more to the open. And again, that's by the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is not within these churches or these organized religions. So, I brought this out, y'all. I was edified, y'all. Stay strong, keep pushing forward. Shalom.